Ladies and gentlemen, Basil and Will with Grayson Hobby, and today we have a new variation of an old friend. <laughs> this is the Beta FPV Cetus Light Kit. This is a non-FPV drone. There is an FPV option as well that we offer. Today we're going to highlight the non-FPV version because this is the ultimate budget intro drone for beginners. Spoiler alert, this is about half the price of, less than half the price of F other FPV drones from Beta. During this video, we're gonna go over this guy, we're gonna take it out of the box, Will is gonna show us how to calibrate it, how to set it up and fly it, and then for bonus, we're gonna go Whoa. and add the FPV camera. All right, Will, who is this drone for? So this is the ultimate, like, the price point of this, you could give it as a gift for someone that's looking into FPV. Uh, if you have children, if you wanna get one yourself, you're just not comfortable flying or spending the money. You're for a big child. You yeah, your inner child, you know. It's great for STEM programs. Actually, I think this is a great entry level. We sell a lot of CDS kits for our STEM programs in the area. They also have mentioned, is there anything cheaper? As you progress in the hobby, this is not junk. This is not a drone you get from a toy store yeah. or for a big box store. This is hobby grade stuff, upgradable, it's the real deal. And that's it. Yeah, it's 5.8 analog video. I won. All right, so what we have here is a Cetus Light kit. This is the non-FPV version. So let's see what's inside. We got, got the drone itself. We have the transmitter. And then under the plastic shell, we have a charger, a USB-C cable for the charger, two batteries, 300 milliamp one cells. Looks like a pack of motors, props, a tool for the props, screwdriver. Spare motors? Yeah. No way. And a USB-C adapter for firmware updates. And this is racing, uh, we'll go over that in a second. Those are gimbals. The uh, Not gimbals, but little. Stick extensions. Yeah. And then we have a manual and a quick QR code, probably for like a digital manual or arm uh, support stuff. That is, I am su so surprised about that. <laughs> so the... that's the beauty of this kit. So if you have a Cetus Light, or I'm, I'm sorry, a regular Cetus kit, this is almost like a great parts kit, if nothing else, because you're getting six motors, which I believe is about 20 to $30 by itself. You're getting two batteries, which that's what, 30 divided by eight. So it's a couple bucks there. Uh, an extra charger, which these are like $10 or so with a USB-C cable. And then a little basic transmitter, which will pair with other drones. This is a CC2500 chip, so it does like, uh, I believe D16, D8, and Fataba FHSS. Which so is Free Sky, basically. It's, it's Free Sky and Fataba, so it's right. it's usable. Mm -hmm. um, now, the one thing it is a centering stick, but we'll go over that in a minute. I actually kind of like that for beginners, and we'll talk about that later. All right, and one noticeable feature, this is a blank. Yes, there is no camera, so you'll see it's missing the camera. So these are, uh, the gimbals on this transmitter are like more like a thumb style for like Xbox controller, PlayStation, all that, for people who are new to it. Uh, for those of you who've flown before, you probably want to switch these out and you pull straight up because they're a little square keying. And then you put the longer stick ends on here. And it definitely, for anyone that's flown with a regular transmitter or anything like that or have any experience in the hobby, this is nice, especially if you have larger hands because it gives you a little more room. Also, the longer sticks feel like you get a little more resolution feeling. Out of, you're not uh, over controlling as Can much. you pinch with those? You could pinch with this. This is That's really what they kind of claim it to be, but such a small transmitter. And while we're talking the transmitter, you'll see it has four buttons on the top. Switch A, when speaking of the C to slight kit here, switch A is your arm and disarm. B is to calibrate, so when the quad is disarmed, you put it on a flat surface, you push B, it'll, the lights will flash, and it'll go into calibration mode, and then you let go, and that's to help center level the gyro out. If you're getting any drift, you can do that. So in other words, don't put your, don't put the drill yeah, like you don't want to Yeah, you don't want to calibrate like that. You want the flatter flat of the surface, more 90 degrees is better. We digress. Um, switch C is slow and um, fast mode, I think mm -hmm. they call it. Yeah, Basically, exactly. the how much aggression, how aggressive the, the tilt can be. So low sensitivity, higher sensitivity, and then switch D on this particular model does nothing. If you have the camera, if you add the optional upgrade camera or you get the kit with the camera already installed, switch D will switch through the channel so you can change your FPV channel to be able to fly with other people um, or go to a cleaner channel depending on where you're at. All right, and last but definitely not least. All right, so my... we opened up the bag here and this is all the little accessories that come with it. You got your two batteries, is 300 mil BT? with BT 2.0 connectors, which these connectors will hold up a lot better than the old PH 2.0 connectors oh, yeah. yep. that you see on old whoops. The screwdriver, so if you do get the upgrade kit for the camera, you can unscrew this and change parts out. Keep in mind the motors just plug in, there's no soldering. Speaking of motors, 
you get one clockwise and one counterclockwise motor. You'll see on the bottom of the quad, uh, each corner, you'll see cross corner, the red and blue, and then you'll see the white and black. Question. You do brushed yeah. or brushless? These are brushed. Okay. These are equivalent of 19,000 kV. They are seven sixteen, so they're seven millimeter diameter, sixteen millimeter uh, straighters long, and that's the motor there. Um, you do get two spares in addition to the ones on it, and a set of props. Again, this is an a lot this of bang awesome. for the buck no, for the money. Yeah, yeah. Um, this USB-C here, um, I have seen other reviewers mention about Betaflight. Guys, don't be fooled by that. As far as I can tell, this is not for Betaflight. This is not a Betaflight flight controller. No, it's their own software. It runs their own software, or it's a variation of what they call Silverlit, I believe. Um, so there is a firmware update capability, I believe, with this. Yeah, absolutely. But is. not with Betaflight, guys. Correct. Don't don't get fooled by that. Um, so it's configurable, but it's not Betaflight. Yes. Um, this is possibly used for something. I have not found any documentation or anything uh, for aftermarket firmware. I'm thinking it's more for troubleshooting on their side that they can hook it up maybe. As far as this goes, you're not gonna really use this in this particular case here. Hold on, one thing I would get a lot is the motors burn out. But tell yeah, us so with brush motors, they do have a uh, tendency to get the hair build up because these are very 0.8 millimeter shafts and then underneath the prop, between the prop and the motor, um, that's really sits low and there's a small gap. So what happens is like dog hair, cat hair, whatever, Dust, carpet uh, fibers, car etc., yeah. gets into that prop. So every so often you do want to check and inspect after every couple flights and make sure you don't have any buildup because the resistance can overheat the motors and burn them out early. Mm -hmm. um, in the event you do need to take the prop off, you use the tool here, you get underneath and you lift it up and basically it pivots underneath it and pops the prop off. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> They go sleep in there. With the prop down, granted, it'll be farther. You get underneath, and then you slide it up, and it pops the prop off. Okay. Get four spare props with it, guys. Remember that these props are actually oriented uh, clockwise and counterclockwise. They're not all four the same. So if you change like the front left prop, make sure you get one that has the same angle of the prop to spin the correct way. Can these go on upside down? Um, I should say. The hole, in, the hole in the backside would indicate down, so possibly, but you'd really have to force it because it looks like it okay. is mostly closed. So, okay. So, that, so make sure eliminates. you put the same prop. If you look very, very closely on the prop, I don't think we'll see in the video, but this says, oh, I can barely read that, 1220, and this is R. This is a Gemfan 1220 prop, 1.2. Regular. Um and then the other one is just a 1220. So you have a reverse pitch and a regular pitch, and you'll see these are mirror images of one another. So you have to make sure when you change the props, you put the right one on. Otherwise, if you go take out the quad and it just kind of flips over on you, it keeps flipping on its side, um, and like a diagonal angle, that's because that prop is backwards. Or the wrong, I'm sorry, not one backwards. Prop. It's the wrong direction. Yeah. Um, if it flips over one way, then you have two of them on wrong. <laughs> or possibly the wrong motor. Um, and it has a little trouble shooting, and I believe it actually goes over that in there too. The manual is very well written for those of you that actually ask for manuals. Um, it actually is a very well-written manual. Beta did a very good job of having that actually understandable. So props to the Beta FPV on that one. And now, how do you charge your said 1S? So with batteries? the charger, this charger actually has a dual function. It has a test function and dual bay charging. So without it connected to a USB 5 volt source to charge uh, through there, you're gonna plug in the battery there and guess what? It reads the voltage. Now I have gone ahead and pre-charged this battery. When you get them out of the box, don't be surprised if they're between 3.8 and 4 volts per cell. Um, if the battery's below 3 volts, you really need to put it back on charge because it's going to get damaged. Um, 4.27 is pretty much a fully charged. I believe these these charge up to 4.35. Um, so I was charging earlier, and we can actually test both of them independently, y'all. 4.28, 4.27. And to charge that, you simply just plug And you'll this. plug in the USB-C, plug into like a cell phone or a computer or something like that with a five, with a regular USB Any port. Kind of block. And then you plug in the USB-C, and then you plug in the batteries. With the USB-C plugged in, the cell checker does not display, okay? So it's only a charge function when this is okay. plugged in. All right, let's see what the weight of this guy is. Is that on? I can't mm -hmm. see from the same. Perfect. Angle. All right, so let's weigh the drone only. What 20, is it? 26. 26 G. 26 grams. With a battery, 34, we're at 34. Gs. So I believe it's slightly under the 250 gram limit, slightly. So you don't have to register this. This is—he's kidding. It's a lot. Ooh, 
little bit, a little bit. You could add like 10 more bad. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Right. Um, Let's take this bad boy right. for a flight. Tell you guys about the transmitter and the stick positions real quick. All right. So first we're going to plug in our battery. We're gonna turn on the transmitter. So we're going to plug in the drone. All right. So we got put it on battery. level surface. Battery, transmitter's or, on. Transmitter's on. Hold on. Transmitter's on. Transmitter's on. Battery's plugged in. Yep. The it's flashing. The little slot. slot slash Throttle it. down. Throttle down. And it goes solid. What and goes that, solid? The drone. Crap. I you missed it. Do it again. ADHD. Whoa. All right, so we got transmitter on, on transmitter drone on. on. I'm gonna lower the throttle stick, and it locks. Okay. All right, so from here. Wait, we talked about earlier about this about the calibration. Yes. Okay. Oh, good call. Good call. Someone was listening. <laughs> See, I do listen. He gets a cookie <laughs> or like a star. I don't know, gold star sticker. Anybody, send him gold star sticker. Um, the B button right here. We're gonna push this, and while we're pushing it, it's calibrating. Okay. So when you first power on the drone too, I believe it's actually calibrated. Now it's flashed. I can push the button again, let it go up. And you want to start with all the buttons in the high position, not low. Okay. Uh, and from here, we're going to throttle. Now when you fly this, this has a barometer in it. The barometer helps keep altitude. That's the beauty of this drone. For new flyers, this thing is going to maintain its altitude very easily, which is a lot harder than you think for a new drone pilot. Now when you throttle up, you'll move it and you have to get past a certain position, otherwise it'll kind of drop again. So it has to climb to a spot before it'll hold altitude. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. And I'm gonna arm the drone. You'll Wait, hear the prop spinning. How do you arm it? Pushing A, okay. which we went over. Did we? Okay. Wow, you weren't listening. He loses his gold star. <laughs> All right. And it kind of hops in the air. And then once you're up, it holds altitude. And it'll drift a little bit because it's pushing air on the ground. It's such a small quad, the air, the air turbulence is on it. See my chest, ready? This, yeah. And now I'm gonna go ahead and fly, fly away because Basil's hitting it now. And then when you want to land, bring it down, lower the throttle, ever so slightly, and then push it. Oh, <laughs> I didn't push A. <laughs> Beta says their claim to fame is you can smash this into the wall. Wanna smash it into the wall? See our last video, we have the exact same drone. You really want me to beat this thing smash up? Smash it. Let's go. Alright, this is Basil's drone, guys. Wait, wait, this wall. This wall. Huh? This wall. We hit the door. Which smash wall? the door. That wall? Ugh. So, when I hit it, it cut off the motors automatically. I'm gonna disarm. I'm gonna flip it back over. And I'm gonna arm it again. And we're gonna go. Okay, my turn. It, so the quad. Oh, okay. My Film turn. it. All right. All right. How do I fly? Ugh. Remember that video we just did? Like when I was just talking. Uh, he doesn't. A? See, guys, this is proof he does not pay attention. Look, a drone basil can fly. Oh god, he's coming at me. Hey, look at that. This is pretty easy. I can fly one hand. Yeah, I mean, it maintains its altitude, which is the right, barometer. there we go. We got no hand on the controller. What happens if I put my hand here? Nothing. Uh, okay. Unlike the regular CS kit that had a laser sensor for altitude over gaps and stuff like that, this one is just a barometer. So the barometer knows its altitude from the starting point. What happens if I hit the throttle off in the air? It should just fall. Nothing. Oh, there we go. It fell. Throttle off or disarm? A. Oh, okay, yeah. So disarm. That's what, that's what happens. Yeah. You, can actually, you disarm, guess what? The motor's disarm. I didn't know if it could disarm while you're flying. Some kind of safety feature. Hey, if, for those of you who don't see me behind the camera, that was a frowny face. Oh, <laughs> yeah. All right. Durability yeah. testing? We'll, we'll switch, our, switch our jobs. There you go. <laughs> Shame on you, Will, for crashing into the boxes. Oh, poor me. <laughs> okay, we had our fun. Let's take a look. Any damages? No, I mean... I don't see any. It's designed to not go too fast to where it really doesn't hurt itself. Right. Your biggest enemy of this thing is going to be fiber hairs and stuff like that getting under the motors. Okay. The drone is designed... We've flown the older Cetus, which is the same frame. We've smashed the living crap out of this thing, and I haven't broken one yet, so... Um, I'm very confident in the frame's durability. 
um, not having a camera on it makes it even more durable. So if you guys are in looking at this and you're part of a STEM program, if you have a school that students want to learn this stuff, this is a great stepping stone because you can do the simulator on the computers for the school computers, and then you can have them fly the drones and you can progress. This little kit here, for not a lot of dollars, you can convert them. So when the students or your kid or you that wants to fly this thing, wants to go FPV after learning it, there's the camera, there's the cable that goes to the flight controller, there's the screws, and then there's the camera mount. All so, that will go in the frame. You'll take the bottom screws off the frame. But we won't do it down, but it can yeah. be upgraded to you Unscrew the four screws, you'll pull it apart, pop the motors, and then you'll mount the frame in place of this piece right here, the camera. This will go on its mount. You'll just plug in the wires, mount the mount, put it in the frame, mount the two screws, put it back together, and now you're FPV. And that's really all there is to it. So then you pretty much have an FPV version. So battery uh, safety, battery maintenance. What do we need to do after we've flown the batteries? Well, we want to check the voltage on it, see where we're at, and mm -hmm. make sure we're in a, a good storage limit okay. or voltage. So what I like to do is I take my battery, I believe it was this one I just flew. Yeah, 3.87, 3.86. Anywhere from 3.8 to 3.8, Really, actually, 3.9 is a safe limit on a high-voltage LiPo. So is that a good... Um, good... 3.86, this is perfectly good. I can just leave this there. Okay. So I don't have to worry about charging and discharging anything like that. Um, as far as discharging, fly it. To charge it, put it on the charger for a few minutes, okay. and you'll kind of get a feel for how long you need to put it on as you use it, okay. uh, how much will charge back in. So there is some minimal maintenance that it doesn't require to do, but just being in this industry forever, that's... The... If you want these batteries to last you definitely want to make sure you keep them around half charge, which okay. is 3.85-ish. Yeah. Generally, cheaper means junk. This, because of what it is, is a great opportunity because the transmitter can be used for simulators. The drone can actually be flown around, which learning to fly a drone, we always recommend learning line of sight before even ever putting the goggles on anyway. So this is a great entry level to give them the ability to fly and learn line of sight before even going FPV. Right. Oh, <laughs> oh,